Hi everybody. So today I woke up feeling kind of sick. I took an allergy pill and that actually helped. Um, but I'm going to make some soup. I'm going to do a Mexican style chicken soup, caldo de pollo. I have done this before. Uh, I will link the original recipe in the description below, but I just sort of thought this might help you guys. Quarantine life, week four. I don't have all the veggies that I normally put in the soup, but it's going to have to do today. I'm going to get it done. I'm not feeling well. I don't want to be sick, especially right now. So I'm going to do the best I can with what I got. Here we go. <laughs> Right, so let's go over what I'm using. I have, this is a little over, this is around two and a half pounds of chicken legs. I went ahead and just peeled off the skin. That makes it a lot easier for the fat that kind of floats to the surface. So I am going to be um, starting these first, but with the vegetables, I'm gonna use half of this onion. I have a potato that needed to be used. Um, Obviously, I had this Mexican-style squash that needed to be used. I had to cut off some of the parts that went bad. This is a chayote. A lot of these ingredients, just use what you've got. If all you have is cabbage, onion, and carrots, and, you know, do the best you can. But I had one chayote. Part of it sort of got kind of cold, but I'm still going to use it. Um, I also have some pieces of green onion that I'm going to use. I have, I thought I had cilantro, but turns out this was parsley. I'm still going to add it. One stick of celery that I just kind of cut in half. I have two carrots that I scrubbed really well. I'm not even going to peel them. I'm just going to chop them into chunks. And then I have like part of a cabbage. This is the vegetable part with the, the chicken. This is going to be my caldo de pollo. I'm also going to add some salt and seasonings to it, but we'll get to that. But let me get things started. Okay, here I have a 6.9, I believe, a six, at least a six quart pot, but I think this is at 6.9. I can't flip it over to show you, <laughs> but um, I have around three and three quarters, quart, does that make sense? Basically, it's over three and a half quarts. It's somewhere between three and a half to four quarts of water in my pot. Um, I'm going to add my two and a half pounds of chicken right in. Try not to scrape the pot and make a big mess. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna turn on the heat. Okay, so I have my heat source to about medium high heat and I want to bring my water up to a gentle boil. Once it starts to simmer and boil, I'm going to let my chicken cook in the water for about 30 minutes before I add seasonings and stuff. I'm kind of doing things a little different. I want to say in my last video, I may have already added some salt, but for right now, I just want to get a broth going. So just with the chicken and the water, like I said, I want it to come up to a gentle simmer and I'm going to let it simmer uh, gently for about 25 to 30 minutes before I start adding other things to it. By the way, before I forget, I am going to add some uh, dried bay leaves. I have two. Well, this is like one and a half, but two works. And that'll just, again, that's something that will add aromatic flavor to your broth. However you like to season and what you like to add, it's up to you guys. Um, I'm going to be bold as to say that there is no one way to make caldo de pollo. Everyone makes it differently. I typically like to just, you know, add what I have in my fridge and run with that. Okay, so while my chicken is going to gently simmer and cook for about 25 to 30 minutes, it's going to get a head start. I want to go over some things. So, for example, the cabbage. I know some people like a firmer texture to their cabbage. I do not. I like mushy cabbage in my uh, caldo. So, you know, when I add it, you may want to add it a little later in the cooking process. I'm actually going to do this sort of like my grandma style. So once the chicken has a chance to kind of boil and cook for about 30 minutes, I'm adding everything all together. And if it's mushy, it's mushy. And if it's not, it's not. Um, okay, so also, let's see here. Now, this chayote squash, it's, it's a variation of squash. So I want to show you with the chayote, I just kind of cut it in these long chunks. 
you can cut it how you like. And I sort of cut around the seed that's in the center. So it's kind of like that. And then like that. And then see the seed right here? So I'm just going to flip that over and cut, cut the center out. And that's it. So I'm going to do that. And the same thing with my, you know, this squash. I mean, this is not going to, just because it's kind of discolored and it doesn't look pretty, it's not going to hurt anything. Just cut off the end. And I'm going to cut my, um, this squash into large chunks, just like that. And actually, since this is the bigger part, I'll cut it in half and then just big chunk. I find that if you cut it into large chunks, it just holds its shape better as it cooks with everything. Okay, so now I have my pot of water and chicken up to a rolling boil. I'm going to turn it down. I don't want it to rage out of control. And I'm not even going to cover it at this point because right now I want to skim off a lot of what's floating onto the surface here. Okay, so it has been about 25 minutes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my celery, my half of my chopped onion, and I forgot I have about six to seven cloves of garlic that I just sort of mashed. It's going in, that's gonna start building flavor. So here's what I'm using today. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of this. This is my chicken flavor bouillon powder. I'm gonna do one tablespoon just like that. I'm going to start with a teaspoon of salt. I may add salt later. And some cracked black pepper going in. I like a lot of pepper. Let me go ahead and give that a mix. Now I'm just going to add all of my veggies. You can do these in stages, like the potatoes and carrots first, boil for about 10 minutes, and then add the rest of the stuff. That's if you're a stickler for, um, you know, things not being mushy in texture, you know. But I'm adding potatoes, carrots. I'm just going to add it all and let it continue cooking for about another 30 minutes, and it'll be done. Add that right on top. Now, the only other thing I think I would add that I don't have is corn on the cob. I don't have that. So you definitely want to add corn on the cob. That'll really complete my childhood caldo de pollo experience, but I don't have any, so this is going to do. So I'm going to bring this back up to a gentle simmer. I'm going to let it cook until all the uh, vegetables are tender. The chicken at this point is almost cooked through anyways. The broth is going to develop a lot more flavor. So maybe another 35 to 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. I don't know. I'll let you know <laughs> when it's done. Okay, you know what? I think I am going to add some uh, tomato puree. I have a, a jar of tomato puree. I'm just going to add maybe like a quarter of a cup to this. I feel like I want a tomato we got though today. I'm going to give that a mix. Now, fresh tomato also works. If you have some fresh Roma tomatoes, add that to your broth. But I just really want a flavorful broth today. So... And I also like to make, um, you know, a pan of Mexican-style rice. Um, I'm not going to do that today. Maybe I will. Nobody's asked for it yet, and I'm not really not going to eat any. I just want the vegetables and the meat and the broth today. But definitely I'll link, you know, some recipes in the description below if you want to try them out. Here we go. Okay, so once everything is cooked through, your vegetables have reached your desired doneness, they're tender, they're cooked, your caldo is ready. Towards the last five, five to ten minutes, you'll want to taste it for things like seasoning and salt, and add salt to taste towards the end. But this is seasoned perfect for me, so I'm ready to eat. So now I'm just going to serve myself a bowl in my favorite bowl. How many of you have this bowl in your home? <laughs> oh my 
my chicken leg. And I love the mushy cabbage. That also, the chicken and the cabbage by itself is just, that's what I like. So I just have to dig in. How many of you do this? Lime and salt on your corn tortilla and you dip it into the soup? This is, this is where it's at for me. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to finish my caldo. I'm going to rest and relax for the rest of the day. I have the kitchen to clean up. I'll leave it for later. My husband will probably help me. Um, but I definitely hope you guys found this video helpful. It's just another way to make chicken caldo um, or caldo de pollo. It's really one of my favorites. I know a lot of you like caldo de res, which is beef. I tend to lean towards chicken soup when I start feeling sick, but you know, do, what, do what's best for you, what you find more comforting. But anyways, I'm gonna finish this, relax for the rest of the day and unplug. So I apologize in advance if I don't get to the comment section. Um, I typically like to stick around for about 30 minutes um, or so after I post a video, but today I need to rest. So wishing you guys well, stay the course, stay home, cook with me, and um, hopefully we'll all be safe and, and, you know, continue to be well. So anyways, I will check you guys out in the next video, and thanks for watching. Bye.